HC Records is the number one urban record label in the country. It was once Motown, Def Jam, Bad Boy, but today it's HC. I want to thank you all for 18 years of support for HC Records. Jerome is a legend in this rap game, or at least he was. I'm not selling, I'm played out. Then get in the game. You're a dope lyricist, Jerome. Hell, a go in training is right to me. Jesse is an independent rapper from Atlanta. I hate to say it, but he got that juice. I didn't want to say anything till I knew it was for sure, but I got signed to HC Records. And then there's me. Being able to work for HC Records New York office, that is huge. So what's Atlanta like really that bad? You were only there for what, a few months? And now you already moving? Everybody who's anybody wants to be down with HC. Do you really think that you're in any position to tell me what you're not going to do? Word on the curb is that rapper Jay Rome is getting dropped by HC Records. We just had a meeting the other day about reviving his dead career. And it hits the bones, I'm over it. Exactly my point, girl. Sound like an inside job to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How are we supposed to make sense of this? It was a mistake. That's all the sense we need to make. Matter of fact, us being cool is a mistake. Me sitting here listening to you right now, that's a mistake. I don't like what you're accusing me of, and I damn sure don't tolerate anyone coming and questioning me about how I run my label. Listen, I can't stand behind discrimination, and I damn sure ain't standing behind stealing from artists. So if you want me on your little label, then yeah, you need to answer some questions. Now get to talking. You fell off, not me. So you need to get your sissy ass back in the lab. I've been telling you Tristan was crazy, but best friend, boyfriend drama, and danger, like them Iron Danger Alley. Every time we take one step forward, we take five steps backwards. Bye, Alex. Yo, Jesse, don't fucking touch me. Unfortunately, this wasn't only about the music. It was hard for me to watch. I wasn't expecting to see her kissing on you and hugging on you. So you want me to pretend like I like being here with you? when I know that there's an actual woman that I'd rather be out with right now. Then why aren't you with her? Leave the toxic alone and choose to be happy. Choose to be happy, Jerome. Alex, I need to talk to you. Can I come in? Yeah, of course, come on. It was one thing to love you while you were still in love with Avery. This Why the fuck are you because here? Because I fucking love you! Fuck you! This isn't only about the music. This is about the truth. All right. But you gonna have more than a busted lip if you open your mouth up about this. But this sounds like some shit you just taking with your man. What the fuck you talking to? Look! Wait! Alex! Alex! Mitchell! Alex, you're very handsome and very persuasive, but Shauna, she's a top dollar girl. You waited till I fall in love with you for you to drop this shit on me. I don't even know what to do right now. Let's go, please. Please don't. Okay, we clapping back tonight? Of course. <laughs> hey, real hip hop shit. Thank you so much for helping me, Jesse. Child, this might be better than the concert. going on beautiful people it's your boy here Wesley from A Connection TV here on YouTube the one place on the World Wide Web where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences and welcome to my channel if it's your first time seeing me definitely follow me on all social media Twitter and Instagram and threads at A Connection TV now I want to talk about week six of Big Brother week six has been a lot 
from Cameron being allowed to completely embarrass everyone in the house, from me loving the fact that Cameron has positioned himself to be in power, going from uh, veto win to HOH to HOH again to saving himself again, like Cameron deserves to be in the house based off of uh, comp wins and his ability to stay in the game, right? Don't really care for him as a person. Don't really care for him as a player. He's very, he's a villain in the house. Um, and Jared has become a villain in the house too. I think if people had to choose between Jared and Cameron, people would choose Cameron over Jared because Jared has used the R word. Jared is misogynistic. Jared and the way that he speaks to people is just not the most receiving and uh, calming, but at this point, the only difference between Cameron and Jared is that Cameron doesn't curse that much and Cameron didn't say the R word. So they're basically one and the same, if you ask me. If I had to choose between the two, I would actually not be able to because they're both on, I don't know, they're both on equal playing fields, but the people that are aligned with Jared, I care for more than the people that are aligned with Cameron. It just, it is what it is. And there aren't that many people even aligned with him, if that makes sense. But things are shifting in the house. And this week has been long and tumultuous to watch. Cameron gets to embarrass everyone in the house, smash pies into the people's faces that he's going to save. And he opts to put up Felicia and Izzy, which is a great move because these people have been making moves to get him out of the house for the last like four weeks. So them being on the block at the hand of him is great. If I was Cameron, I'd be loving that. Um, if I were the viewers, I'd be loving that. I'm not team Cameron, but he made a smart move, an actual smart move for his game. So shout out to Cameron. It's the smashing me in the face part. That's kind of putting me aback. Felicia goes on a save my own butt campaign and talks to Cameron. By the way, Cameron is not moved any which way. He can care less what Felicia has to say, but if he's receiving good information that could really tip him off, he is okay to receive that. And right away, Felicia blows up Siri, blows up Izzy, and say that they are the reason why Red is out because right before the vote, they told her that Red was not a part of the team anymore and was gunning for her or some bull crap, and it is what it is. Felicia tells Cameron this, and Cameron is soaking it all up. Cameron believes that he wasn't a part of no Legend 25, that Legend 25 was not even a real thing. And to be quite honest, at this point, there are like 15,000 different alliances in this house because these players really aren't really playing in my eyes. Like, no one is really, I don't know. For me, I feel like being a part of Big Brother revolves around your social game, but it also revolves around comps. And right now, this whole season has been nothing but social game. And up until Cameron's most recent win and having the comps be involved. And so, I don't know, it's just, I don't really care about this particular season that much as I thought I would because it's just all been one whole social game. Izzy talking to Cameron would be the equivalent of how I would be if I had to talk to Cameron in that house. I, you know, if I were to ever get casted on Big Brother, I would never, I could never see myself sucking up. I just, I could never see myself doing an Izzy and going to talk to HOH. For what? <laughs> I just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just wouldn't waste my time. I would hope that, and it would, the only way that I would even talk to the HOH is if we had some kind of rapport. But I wouldn't be on the block if we had some kind of rapport. So I'm not talking to the HOH. I'm talking to the relationships in the house that I've built to hopefully solidify the relationships in the house that I've built. You know what I'm saying? Izzy has to tell this man that she believes that she's not the target, but she knows that she's the target. And Cameron is like, when Cameron has the opportunity to throw it back in their faces is when it's just the most hurtful for me, if I were Izzy, because Cameron says to her, yeah, I know how that feels. I've been in your position a couple of weeks. What? See, that's why I wouldn't have been in the house, in the room talking to Cameron. Like, I would not give the HOH the opportunity to come at me with that mouth. No! What are we talking about here? He, in this moment, knows that the ultimate goal for Cameron is to uh, backdoor Sari. I have to say, though, the, re the way that these people are narrating these sessions 
all of the rumors that are on social media about the producers leading them any which way just makes sense. They're so clear in these diary room sessions than they are in the actual house. And so for me, it's like, girl, did you really know that? Cameron, did you really know that? You didn't. So it's like, I don't know. It's just confusing how they're fed this information and, and made to, you know, give these great narrative uh, confessional interviews, but they don't use any of whatever they're giving to by the producers to really make their game flow. I guess except for Cameron, because Cameron lied and purposely did not say who his real target was until he put up Felicia and, and Izzy. So maybe Cameron gets it, I guess, whatever. America, although she's had so many concerns about Cameron and, and is altering and changing her clothes when Cameron walks in and out and flicking Cameron off and all of this, she's riding his, riding his wave so elated at the fact that he's made these moves. And for me, I just really want to know what is the issue between Cameron and America? Because I don't just, I, for me, like, there's the game and then there's reality, right? There's the game and then there's real emotion. Real emotion gets involved in this game. I don't care what anybody has to say. Like I said, me talking to, if I was Izzy, me talking to Cameron would have never happened. I already know he wants me out the house, so I'm not about to ride his junk just to make him appease him and to make him feel good. Like y'all, that like that whole smashing the pie in my face. Child, I don't know. I see, I, I probably... <laughs> I probably couldn't be a part of none of that. You know what I'm saying? But then again, I would have been HOH and I wouldn't have got the pie smashed in my face. So, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not doing none of that. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that kind of stuff. So, if America really has a problem with Cameron, like if I really had a problem with Cameron, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, yes, he's the man. He made this move. Ah! Oh. You know what I'm saying? Because do I feel bad for America that America's going through whatever the hell she was going through in the house? If she's sitting here championing the person that's probably put her through all of whatever it was that she was going in the house, is she really butthurt about it? No, she can't be. That, and that's how I feel about it. It's not that real in my mind. So, like, I don't feel bad for America, like, at all. I just don't. Sari comes in groveling and giving Cameron a hug. Girl, what? Why are you doing this? I feel the same way about America that I do about Sari and that I do about Izzy. Like I wish Izzy just, I just wish one of these three people wouldn't have been eating up his booty. You know what I'm saying? And making him, making him feel like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about here? Y'all all three don't like him, but y'all gotta kiss his ass. Like, that would not have happened. Sari, girl, what are you doing? What's the point? I guess because she's not on the block and she has to try to make... No, but the cat's out the bag, mama. Like, why are we even... Like, I just wouldn't indulge that much. I couldn't indulge that much. Like, what? At this point, it's up to me to not be backdoored. Let me work on the relationships in the house. I'm not kissing the HOH's ass. I'm just... I, like, I don't understand why these people are doing it. And it's making me upset. Izzy says that if she wins the power of veto, that she's not going to use it. And she's going to make sure that Sari doesn't get backdoored. That's real relationships in this house. I feel like, I feel like Big Brother can be played the way that Izzy and, and Sari are having their relationships. They just weren't winning anything. They weren't winning anything at all. And that's what I'm saying. Like, the whole side... One whole side of the house is just a pure social experiment. Where's the competition? Oh, they got all heisem already. But like, like, where's the competition? Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I felt like I, if I would have been in the season, I would have been heisem. I wouldn't have been as ignorant and arrogant as heisem was when he was HOH and would have made that horrible speech and was talking to people the way he was and not allowing people to speak. But when? Get veto when? Do what Cameron's doing. When? Get veto when? And hell, do what Jared's doing right now. And as much as y'all hate Jared and proclaim to hate Cameron, there are people online calling Jared Hitler. Yeah, nobody's altering their clothing when Jared walks in the room. So I don't even understand why we're even giving Jared that much. But okay, y'all can give Jared all that, all that that you want to give him. But at the end of the day, he's winning. Cameron's winning. The two villains in the house are winning. 
Jad and Cameron, like right now, everybody's talking to Cameron, licking his balls. And Jag, who was just nominated eight to whatever or ten to whatever it was to get out the house, is really not. I don't even know. I don't even want to say if he's playing the game right at this point because now he's made an alliance with uh, Corey and America. Okay, whatever. Too little, too late in my mind. But he's having to go to Cameron to play Kate. And Cameron is basically like, well, if you don't do what I want you to do, I'm just throwing you up. Here's my question, and maybe I could just Google this to figure it out. Does the HOH have the power to just switch nominations whenever the hell he wants to before the veto ceremony and say, oh, I want you to go up? Because the way Cameron is talking to me, if I'm Jag, first of all, I wouldn't have been Jag. I just, would, I just wouldn't have been Jag. It would have never been me. But Cameron talking to me like that, and I'm supposed to be like, yeah, no, I'm not going to say anything. You, no, you're absolutely right. What? Cha! I just don't understand it. I, I, I just do not understand the people in this house right now. And to be quite honest, even Izzy pissed me off when she went to go talk to him. Because don't, I'm going to get to that point. I'm, oh, I'm going to get to that point. This week frustrated me. Jag and Matt create the corniest alliance based off of, uh, like, being considered the leftovers, if I if I have to be honest. Like, Matt's not winning anything. Jag's not winning anything. Okay, Matt won uh, the competition, the veto competition, but he didn't get the veto. And then Matt won something else before. But Matt and Jag have not been HOH and have made any kind of moves at all. And so they're signifying this final two alliance with each other. They call themselves the Hitmen after Corey and Derek. Then they decide to change it to the Minutemen. And when they shake hands, they look at their watch. Cool. Core me. Cameron at this point trusts Jared. And to be honest, that's a testament to Jared, even though y'all hate him. The fact that Cameron can, can confide in Jared speaks to Jared's social game. And so it just it is what it is. Jared has Cameron's trust and they're having this conversation about what they want to do with the nominations and Cameron's like, jerking off in front of Jared and Jared's like, yeah, man, get that, get that. You did that, man. Like really making him feel good. And again, that's just a testament to, to Jared. And, uh, you know, you we we realize that Cameron really doesn't know what's going on in the house. Matt says he feels closer with uh, Jared and Jack. So, you know, uh, Matt and uh, Jared have this conversation about what they would possibly do if they won the veto or whatever the case may be. And again, this is a true testament to Jared. And the fact that he has these kind of allegiances, period. And people trust him. Izzy and Sari have one of the most amazing conversations that I've seen and, and or can remember. Because I don't remember from season to season to season like y'all do. Um, in the house, it was so real. It was authentic. And, and I was crying. Like... You know, and, and one thing that I like about Big Brother, Big Brother can have so, can have so much um, discrimination, isolation, racial uh, issues, prejudice issues against people of color throughout the whole freaking series. But Big Brother highlights the relationships that can come from people that are different walks of life. Here we are having this uh, Caucasian lesbian woman, okay, and this uh, African American black woman um, coming together and really having a true bond. It it just it it fills me up with so much love and joy that that I can watch that on network television and see the authenticity in all of that. Right? Because again, the history of Big Brother with the prejudice and the racial, and here we are, two different uh, you know, quote unquote races of people, um, ethnicities talking and loving on each other like family i like this is the best moment in the game the best moment in the game for me and through this veto competition um felicia is doing better than a couple of other people like she wasn't the like the first one out izzy was the first one out then uh cameron then you know then felicia so felicia really did her thing and, and was able to stay in amongst these people so shout out to felicia for sticking sticking it through you know what i'm saying um, Jared did well, Jag did well, Matt did well, um, and Matt ends up winning, but he allows Jared to keep the veto, which allows Jared to save Sari. Because of winning the veto, 
um, Jared has a conversation with Cameron and uh, Cameron exposes his plan to Jared and Jared obviously is not going to use the power of veto because the backdoor target is going to be Sari. But in the live feeds, Jared threw everyone under the bus to Cameron, uh, but the television show only showed us that he threw a couple of people under the bus and named a couple of other people. Not even a couple of people, he only named Jack on the, the edited version, but in the live feeds, he named so many people, right? And so, it, it just, it is what it is. Jared wants to save his mother and that's it. I don't care about the showmance between um, uh, Corey and America. It's adolescent and it, I feel like I'm watching kids fornicate on television. I don't care to see it, don't wanna watch it. I can care less about this, like, just getting out of puberty situation between the two of these people. I can care less. They're so young to me and it's not attractive me watching that. Um, and, I, and I really can care less about Jared, a Jared in the blue, but at least they look like somewhat semi-adults. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to watch these kids on TV playing with each other under the covers. It's disgusting. This house has had so many freaking alliances from the professors, for real, for real, Legend 25, Bye Bye Bitches, Seven, Seven Deadly Sins, The Minutemen, The Handful, all the crossroads, all these different alliances, and they can't hold none of them together, right? Sari has to choose between Felicia and Izzy, and she wants to choose Izzy because Izzy has a better opportunity of keeping Sari in the game over Felicia. And it's just facts, right? We find out, or I find out about the Crossroads Alliance between Corey, Izzy, uh, Felicia, and, I mean, Sari, Sari, and Jared. Didn't really know too much about that, but whatever. I find out about it during this episode, which is very interesting because throughout the whole interim of everything that's been going on, Corey has not been at the helm of this alliance. Matt has, at least from Sari to Matt. And so when Sari finds out, when Corey finds out that Sari has been telling Matt, uh, you know, certain things like her being chose from America uh, over Matt, and he has a four a four person alliance with her, Izzy and Jared. Corey starts to feel some sort of way. Why? How did Corey find this out? America told Corey, and who told America? Matt told America because America is wanting to go around the house and flip the head on its, uh, uh, flip everything on its head and get Izzy out because she feels that between Felicia and Izzy, Izzy is the bigger target. But who does America start this? A riding wave with someone that apparently she hates, someone that apparently makes her feel uncomfortable in the house, someone that apparently everyone is calling that actual harassment on him. You know what I'm saying? And she's up here riding his wave, talking to him like there ain't no problem between them. That's why I'm just like, I just don't like this whole victim thing that people are like putting on people because it, it can't be that real. It can't be that real. If if Cameron is sitting here actual harassing people, why would America be riding his wave? I don't care. It's not a much, not not enough money in the world that's gonna make me sit here and ride this man wave if this man is really doing this to me in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the fact that the the networks is not really showing what's happening, but allowing Cameron to be painted as this predator, and this girl is sitting here just oh. Oh, yeah, Cameron, let's go. Like, I just don't like that, and I have a problem with that. I want to know what's really happening between them and the house. Because there's no way America is really that perturbed over Cameron if she's going to sit here and ride his wave like that. I just don't, that just really irks me. Because it's just too many people out here that have the ability to, to, to cry wolf and cry victim and ain't, and ain't really put in that situation. I'm annoyed. I don't, I don't like that. But here she is, sitting here like, oh my God, we need to be teams, we need to work together. Then she goes over and talks to Corey. Corey, you need to get Izzy out. That's what we need to do. Oh, Matt told me. Oh, what? Sari is telling Matt, but not me? Okay, now I need to go after Sari and them. So America puts this thing in Corey's back and Corey, Corey formulates this plan to get, you know, these people out of the house and to, to get Izzy out of the house. And Izzy is supposed to be close to, you know, Corey. But what really doesn't, like what really aggravates me is that why are you throwing this out on Sari versus Izzy? You know what I'm saying? Sari's not the one on the block. 
Izzy, you're thinking that Izzy is coming at you sideways and not feeding you enough information for you to be safe, but you've never been put on the block. Your name has never been brought up. So why are we caring that much? I, I'm so confused with that because I feel like if Corey was so solid or wanted to be solid with someone that's been his closest ally in Jared and, and Sari and Izzy, why not solidify that? Why not keep Izzy as a shield over a Felicia? Like, you know what I'm saying? Either way, America convinces Corey that what he needs to do, and then Corey runs and, like, gets all the numbers that he needs to get. In the midst of all that, him and Corey, him, Corey and Jared have a blow-up that really separates and, 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 and strips their relationship to the core. And honestly, I don't know who Jared ever thinks he's talking to, but Jared would not be talking to me like that. But Jared is just like his mother, because his mother sits here and says the F word every other sentence. So the fact that Jared is like, F this, F this, mother, F this, F this, mother, F this, and really coming down on Corey, and Corey finds it really hard to stick up for himself towards him, it just it is what it is. Corey, Corey feels compelled to get Izzy out the house because America made it all start. Corey brings all these people together. Izzy gets out of the house. And Jared has caused this rift with everything because Jared has blown up all these alliances and now everything's all out. And Jared tried to make it known that Corey lied to him and this is why Corey, he can't trust Corey and this is why he wants to go out against America. Okay, all of this is happening. And at the end of the day, all I really care about is Izzy getting out the house. In this moment, with everything that has gone on, and my camera's gonna shut down in a second, the only person I care about is Izzy. That's the only person I care about. Why? Because she seems the most authentic and she seems the most real. Even though she has to do this picky thing, picky party thing with Cameron, she got her justice due because she made him a part of that punishment. And she got his justice due because she didn't hug him. And you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, she's a sore loser. Oh, she's a sore loser. Bye bye, piggy. These people are trash. I'm sorry, all these people on social There's no way you gonna tell me that y'all not supposed to have some kind of personal or emotional connection within this house. Maybe not in your decision making, which is why Heisen left. Felicia was very emotional in that decision making. They all were very emotional in their decision making to get Heisen out, which led the, which is leading to their ultimate demise. But there are moments where you can be emotional and moments where you can be real and moments where you can still play the freaking game. Like, what are we talking about? Cameron's move to Felicia and Izzy was an emotional move. It was also a gameplay move. So, you know what I'm saying? So her not wanting to hug this man, she don't like him. And she ain't gotta like him. Leave the house, you ain't gotta hug him. And you already know the reason why you're getting out of the house is because of Corey punk ass. Who is who has fed all this information to America? So is he not hugging Corey? And is he not hugging um Cameron and telling both of them, y'all are next? Was was I loved every bit of it. I loved every bit of it. Because that's facts. I just felt bad for Izzy because now Izzy. Is out of the game. But you know why I love Izzy so much? She did not go against her word. She did not spill uh, Jared and, and Ceri's tea. Izzy is a real one. Izzy is a real one. If I would have been in that house, my favorites would have been Heisem and Izzy. Izzy is a real one. And not because we're both gay. Well, that probably would have led to it. We would have been, we we been the alphabet crew. You know what I'm saying? Izzy is a real one for that, but I felt so bad for her because in her interview, you could feel the pain. You could feel the pain, and she wanted to cry. I just felt so bad for Izzy. Justice for Izzy. Justice for Izzy, but, you know, Izzy was in the interview saying that her demise was ultimately due to Jared, and I don't think that's the case. Your demise was ultimately due to America, boo-boo. It wasn't Jared. Jared didn't throw your name up like that. It was America, and America fed it to her man, and her man ran with it and got you out the house. It was what it was, and that's just unfortunate. But you know what's even hotter, and this is just what you have to do, period. What's, what's even hotter, and this is what you have to do, period. Jared is the HOH, and Jared won the HOH fair and square. Fair and square. And that's all that matters. And and who's up for nominations? Can, uh, Corey and freaking America. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. But Jared ain't got a chance in his veto comp, not unless Jared wins veto. If Jared, if Jared wins veto, can't nobody say nothing about Jared. 
Can't nobody say nothing about Jared. Can't nobody say nothing about Jared. But anyways, I hope that Jared and Sari make it through this double eviction, to be honest. And the only person that I'm really, truly uh, going for and wanting to win the whole thing is McCole. That's it. Bowie is trash. She's a peon. Uh, Corey is trash. He's a peon. America is, is a victim. Cameron is doing a damn thing. Cameron is winning because he's he has to win. He has no choice. And I don't care what Cameron is doing because he's he's playing his game for him. So big up to Cameron. Uh, I want McCoy to ultimately win. Uh, if I had to go down the ladder, it would be it would be McCoy, Sari, Jared, Cameron, Matt. Anyways, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Tuesdays.